Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the future of the water and wastewater industry and the careers you didn't know about. I'm your host, Dave Kosminski, and we are on location today at the Connecticut section AWWA and CWWA fall meeting. And with us in the house from the Connecticut Water Company, Mr. Jerry McDermott. So, hi, Jerry. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me. No worries. Thanks so much. So, uh, tell me. Tell me about your day job, man. <laughs> yeah, so uh, with the Connecticut Water Company, I'm our manager of service delivery for our Southwest region. Okay. Um, in that responsibility, I have, um, I'm ultimately responsible for all of the field activities that okay. happen at the customer's house with our field customer service reps, uh -huh. and then all of the maintenance activities that happen uh, out in the road that you see. Okay, so you got a lot of balls in the air. We do, <laughs> yes. Now, uh, on, on that, uh, your region, so how many customers in that region? So in my region, we have about 60,000. Okay. Um, we rep represent in our southwest region 32 towns, I believe it is. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, primarily, are you, uh, are you surface water or are you uh, groundwater? Now? We have a mix throughout our regions. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how does that work? So how does that work? So we actually have a separate team that's responsible for our, our uh, supply operations. I see. Okay. Um, that's our supply operations team. And uh, throughout our regions, we have both surface water reservoirs. Mm -hmm. uh, we have wells. And that team manages um, those sources. Nice, nice. Now, you know, rolling back the calendar just a few years on, on your, your educational path. Sure. Um, how did how did you get to where you are? I mean, did when you got in through high school, did yeah. you aspire to work in the water industry, or how did that come about? <laughs> that was not my plan. <laughs> 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 um, interestingly, so uh, out of high school, I went to school. Yeah, I went to Suffolk University in Boston. Okay. Uh, my plan at that time was to become a lawyer. Okay. Um, so I was in their business program, and I intended to transition into their their law program. I see. Um, like many people, my plan changed along the way there. <laughs> um, I ended up moving back to Connecticut years ago, um, and I got into the construction field. Okay. Uh, in the construction field, we were doing residential construction, actually. Okay. Um, and from there, I realized that, you know, security was an important thing for me. And as so many people know, the utilities are a secure industry to become a part of. Absolutely. Um, and I found a job through a friend, actually. Uh, his name is Eric Hozier. I still work with Eric today, mm -hmm. and uh, Eric uh, suggested I apply at the water company where he worked, and that's what I did. I applied at Connecticut Water Company. Nice. Um, during that time, uh, I, I decided to shift gears, right, from an education perspective. Um, I actually participated in the Gateway Program. Okay. Um, amongst a number of other people uh, at my company. That with are Wes Winterbottom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, Wes <laughs> taught one of my classes yeah. there. Um, so I participated in the uh, Gateway uh, Water Management Program, mm -hmm. and then I later went on and finished my bachelor's degree uh, in project management. Oh, nice. Now, how long? How many years have you been with Connecticut Water? I've been with Connecticut Water Company. November 6th will be 18 years. Wow. Yeah. He's still on a honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they, I thought so, too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Fantastic. So, um, you know, I mean, in doing these podcasts, it's, it's amazing, it, you know, 90% of the people, okay, that I've interviewed and so forth, um, got into the water industry by happenstance. Just like you said, mm -hmm. you know somebody, you knew it, it worked or whatever. And, you know, that that's my whole premise. And, you know, kind of when I launched this podcast uh, well, over a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. is to, you know, get, uh, you know, students aware of the water industry, yeah. you know, early on in high school and, and early mm -hmm. on in college. So that's, that's my premise here. So. You know, it, it, that, and that's a, a great point, <coughs> and I want the same thing because I can't imagine myself doing something differently. I, right. I truly find a passion in the water industry, and interestingly, I've been having a lot of conversation with my teams about opportunity because, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes the people that are working in the field, our customer <laughs> service folks, our construction folks, um, you know, they, they, that they're, they're there for their craft. They're not necessarily, they didn't necessarily come to the water industry for the <coughs> water industry. But what they're finding is the same thing that I did, and there's a passion in it. So most recently, we've been working with my teams about education opportunities so that they could advance their careers, yep. just like I did. Mm -hmm. So I have, I believe, nine people now um, that are going to be registering and have already initiated the application or the um, admissions process okay. at Gateway okay. uh, with the intent of starting their utility management program in the spring. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, and again, it, it's, you know, we're, we're all getting older. I mean, I retired after 50 years in the industry, and right. it's, you know, we, we got to start <laughs> literally refilling the pipeline, you know. 
Yeah, and that, that's, a, that's a real challenge, right? So we have so many people retiring, um, you know, and we have uh, our succession plan is a, it's a challenge, right? Yeah, yeah it is. It's, it's really hard to fill these roles like the position that I'm in now. Exactly. Um, so, you know, we're really trying to bring people up get them education, sure. um, build their, their toolbox there so that they can fill these roles when people like myself move on. Well, you know, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, obviously we do the fall meeting and the, the at cave and so forth mm -hmm. when you've got educational yeah. opportunities to, you know, hear different speakers on, uh, you know, right now we have one going on climate change, and right. you know, uh, you know, that, that, that is an issue that we're going to all have to deal with, you know, regardless of whether, you know, I mean, some people say it's a hoax, but it's real. It's real. And, you know, you know, we, we, you know, so many people I hear talking about it, you know, how does that impact our, our sources? Sure. And it does. Oh, absolutely. Um, rivers are rising. Sources are changing. So, yeah. you know, we have to be uh, prepared for that. I exactly. Exactly. So, uh, you know, uh, when you got, got out of high school and went to, now you went to, what college did you go to? Um, yeah. I went to Suffolk University, University first, okay. and then I finished through an online program at ah. Southern New Hampshire University. There you go. Yep. Yeah, as, yeah, they, they uh, Southern University, New Hampshire, they advertise on TV. Like they do, the, yeah, with the bus. Right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, um, you know, I in fact one of, one of the first first podcasts, I think, uh, first or second podcast, mm -hmm. uh, I had uh, I had Maureen Westbrook on. Oh yeah, and she was obviously a staple uh, at Connecticut Water. And, oh yes. and a, and a uh, you know stalwart in the industry and has been there a long time and, and that's right. So forth uh, and did a lot of good. Know, yeah, as far as that game, it grew uh, a lot of it. Now, uh, Connecticut Water also has some um, uh, a presence out west, right? We do. So, Connecticut Water Company, um, we are a subsidiary, yeah, uh, essentially of the SJW Group. SJW Group is based out of San Jose. It's yep. our parent company. Um, SJW Group is the parent company for not just Connecticut Water Company, but Maine Water Company, okay, yeah, and Texas as well. Right, right. Now that was. Uh, yeah, and I think that was all negotiated when Maureen was there. That's right, and, and so forth. And that, that there was a lot of controversy over that. And there and, was, and, and so forth. Yeah. But uh, it is what it is. You know, I think uh, the the water industry, as you know, I tell all of my students, is it's a it's an industry that uh, it's a secure industry. It's mm -hmm. a stable industry. It's uh, it, it's not something that uh, you know. Uh, jobs can be outsourced. Right. You need boots on the ground. Yeah. Uh, and it's well paying. My God. Yeah. You can't, uh, you can't, you know, outsource it across the pond. You need boots on the ground to, you know, fix the leaks to yep. to make, you know, uh, you know, have the treatment operators. Now, how how many treatment plants do you have in your district? Oh, that's a great question. So within mm -hmm. my uh, region, we have a number of treatment plants, but we have three primary, uh, large, large treatment plants. Mm -hmm. Sure. But throughout our systems and all of our regions, we have you know smaller operations, so we have different zones, if you will. Right. Um, and in those different zones, there's different sources. Right. And sometimes um, they may be smaller sources, maybe a well, right, okay. with a small treatment mm -hmm. uh, facility on site. But we do blend all of our sources, in most cases, uh, throughout our region. So you have the uh, you have the uh, uh, the capability of wielding water between your various regions. We do. Yeah, so generally speaking, you know, within our regions, we serve a number of towns, right? Okay. So we have these clusters of towns within the regions, but within those larger regions, we have different sources. Uh -huh. So we're blending those sources to meet all of our customer needs. Mm -hmm. And that just, not, that's not just domestic water, um, that's fire flow water as well. And okay, that's a, yes. that's a uh, very well, important feature. Absolutely, that. absolutely. You know, fire flow, you know, I mean, you know, depending on the, the, the towns of way is, is uh, also, um, you know, very important, you know, in the insurance industry when you're talking right. about, you know, fire protection and all that kind of stuff, it can affect insurance mm -hmm. rates and so forth. That's right. Uh, now, do you guys uh, typically, do you, add, do you add fluoride in, in, in any of your systems? We do. Okay. Yep, we do have fluoride in some of our systems. Um, you know, we, uh, we have, you know, significant treatment processes throughout. And in fact, it's funny, I have well water at home. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes treatment comes up, you know, people ask me, oh, you, you know, I, I much prefer my well water. And I try to explain to them, you know, for, for me, I'm quite on, I'm, I'm contrary to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, geez, if I could have public water at my house, I would because oh, sure. I know how much work goes into making sure that water is safe. I'm not testing my well every day or every week or every year for that matter. Exactly. Our water company, for example, Connecticut, we do 200,000 tests a year. Yes. That's yes. a lot of water sampling to ensure that the water quality is good and safe and reliable for sure. our customers. 
Well, you know, the, and the, to that point, uh, do you have your, your own in-house labs or do you outsource the laboratory testing? We do both. So we do have in, in-house laboratories, um, but we also use um, cons- uh, outsource uh, some of our, our sampling and testing okay. as well. Yeah. I know, because uh, uh, regional does, they do a lot of wa- sampling or uh, testing for w- other water utilities. Huh? Yes, they do. Their labs. Yes. So yeah, we, right. use, we use EML in Wallingford for, mm-hmm. for our in, in, in Fort Wayne. Yeah, we have ECL, uh, Phoenix. There's a number of labs out there that we use, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, now how many employees do you have in your region? So I- under, I couldn't tell you how many I have in my entire region, but under me specifically, I have uh, 32 employees. Okay. Yeah. Now are they primarily operators? or? Uh, yeah, so most of them are um, field customer service representatives okay. or field uh, main- maintainers, if mm-hmm. you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, you know, we call it construction services, but... Just for those, you know, in the audience, most people are familiar with that role as our maintainers, right? right? right, right. They're the ones out there fixing the pipes when there's an issue. Yeah. Sure. Now, what, uh, you know, as far as your, your meter reading, are you pretty much AMR or how, how do you? So we have a blend right now, but primarily we are boots on the ground. We are still walking up to your customer house and, and scanning the, um, the MIU outside. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but we are looking, we're exploring opportunities to do things like AMI or AMR. Okay. We do have um, some of our, s- our s- we do have some areas that we have under newer technology like AMR. Okay. Or AMI. Um, however, our goal is to, to go that direction. Yeah, obviously the radio reads are, you know, driving down the street. And yeah. It's, it's, and, uh, it's listen, let's face it. You know, one of our biggest struggles is uh, unaccounted for water, non-rate, you know, um, the, the issue there with, with our current reading system, sometimes we may not realize that a customer has a leak for... till the next reading. T- uh, that's right. Yeah, all of a so sudden you got... It could be months. Yeah. And um, with the AMI and AMR, that gives us an opportunity to catch leaks immediately. Sure. Um, and, and reduce that lost water. You know, I know a lot of the systems now uh, that, uh, you know, have the capability, uh, they actually have customer portals, so you can actually customer can actually go into their portal and yeah. see their uses. That's our goal. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting when we do have a customer call, say there's no way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. That's but we can data cool. log. And what we do is, you know, we have to go out there. First of all, we've now been months have passed yeah, yeah. before we've realized that there's a potential issue and we can data log it and show them when the um, when there's usage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if they don't hit zero overnight, Generally speaking, we suspect there's going to be a leak, and mm-hmm. usually there it is. Usually there is. Yeah. Usually it's the toilet. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and that's 90% of the oh, my idea. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, you know, then, then when you push, oh, well, I, sometimes I do have to jiggle the handle, you know. Exactly. You know, exactly. So, oh, so. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we stress the importance of preserving that. I mean, it's such a precious resource, and the amount of effort that goes in, not just, you know, drawing it from the supply and then treating it and then distributing it and the pumps and the cost to do all of these things. It's so important to make sure that we're not just dumping it in the ground through yeah. leaks, through leaky toilets, through faucets, through leaks in the pipes in our distribution system. We, we, we're we checking for leaks literally every day. Sure. We have teams have of to. people that are looking for it. We yeah. have technology that's looking for those leaks to make sure that we don't lose it. Yeah. In fact, I think you guys have a small system in Portland, don't we you? We do. Yeah. Yeah. We have our Rivercrest system yeah, in yeah. Portland. Yeah. By Tane Boulevard. Right That's right. Winchester. Yeah. And we're doing a lot of work right there. Yes, because I think, are you uh, re- redeveloping the well down there? Or? Yeah, so we have a uh, well supply there. We have uh, new wells that we've um, identified there that we're going to be bringing online. Um, that's in a system that, uh, gosh, I, I'm not even sure. I think we acquired that at some point. Yes. Um, it's one of those small satellites. It's not a part of our, you know, it's not a turnkey, you know, uh, you know, if, contiguous to one of our existing systems, if you will. It is a satellite. Um, so we're redeveloping out there. We're, uh, we've just recently replaced all of the water mains out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's about, what, 27 houses? There's there? 24 customers at okay. that system. Okay, that's yep. what I was going to say. Um, it's a small system. It yeah, is. I don't know how far ba- back you go, but that was uh, – uh, if you know, that was a John Wittenzellner system. Yes, I, I do recall <laughs> that name. Yeah, so, you know, it's funny because these small <laughs> systems, and I'm thinking about, you know, the, the challenges that those customers have gone through. It's only 24 customers yeah, yeah. out of our 108,000 customers that we have. Yeah. But the investment that's going into that small system, every customer and every system is equally important to us. Sure. So we've literally gone through there, and we're working there actively now, 
Um, in fact, today they started clearing the um, the roadway to get to the new well. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've installed all new water mains, and they just completed that work about two weeks ago. So they're bringing that online now. They're going to get all new main to curbs. Um, huge, huge investment out yeah. there to sh ensure that they have good water quality like the rest of our customers. Now, on, on, on the water mains, are you using plastic or using uh, ductile iron? We're using ductile iron. Okay. Yep. In that system, I believe we're using pressure class 350. Okay. Um, Connecticut Water Company allows pressure class 350 or class 52, depending on different variables. I see. I see. Well, mm -hmm. you know, and most of it's six inch, I believe, out there. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, correct. Okay. Well, you know, you know, that's... A lot better than they had. That's right. <laughs> well, I, I, I remember, because you used to have, when, when the wells were filling, I can remember seeing the your, your, t your Connecticut water oh, tanker yes. truck making a trip up there. Yep. Yeah, and, and that's what we don't want to do. Yeah. You, you know, do. water systems are not intended to be supplied by a tanker. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. And that, that, yeah, we had to fix that yeah, issue. Yeah, it's there, just so. one of those issues. And, yeah. you know, rightfully so. You have customers down there that, you know, expect service and, and so forth. And, you know, you got to take care of it. Yeah, you know, and that, that's a, it's a great point that you bring up. You know, we have the ability to tanker water and support systems, support communities yep. during, you know, catastrophic events like they just went through in Southbury and Oxford. Sure. Um, well, I think you also have a truck for uh, bottled water or the taps on it, don't we you? We do, so yeah. So that's a smaller <laughs> scale. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it's got a – I think that's a 300-gallon tank, yeah. but it's nicely decorated, and it's got the water fountains and bottle fill station, and we'll bring that out to community events. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. It's it is nice. You get to the situation, especially community events, and it's, yeah. it's, it's good marketing too. You know? It is. You know, th let's face it. We are a part of the community. <laughs> You know, exactly. where people forget. They turn on that faucet. They don't think about us. No, no. Right? Well, you know, it's, it's, that's the thing. You know, uh, infrastructure, and, and you know as well as I do, infrastructure is a big hot topic throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. Everybody has aging infrastructure. You know, you've got water mains in the ground that are 100 years old. And, oh, you yeah. know, everybody looks at the bridges and roads, which you can see, but you've got, yeah. you know, utilities, wastewater and water utilities underneath the ground that are kind of out of sight, out of mind. That's, that's the truth, you know. In fact, we just repaired a, a leak in uh, Naugatuck. Gosh, it was about a year ago now. But right where we had to make our cut, that, that pipe was embossed with 1891. That's okay. how old that piece of pipe was. There we go. And let me tell you something. Despite having a, a small crack in the pipe that was easily repaired, the inside of that pipe was in phenomenal condition. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's personally, I find it all fascinating. Well, so. you get to a point, you know, you have the old pit cast yeah. Cast iron, and, you know, and so forth, and you know, it's uh, you know the, the utility. Or well, let's say the materials today have, you know, obviously like technology, they've moved on. That's you know, right. So, but it's still out there. It's, it's still it's out there. Still That's still right. Out there. So, a anyway, um, you know, as you know, my my alter ego, I've, I'm I'm entwined in the music industry. I own a music store and so forth. So I, I typically ask them, well, what's your what's your favorite genre of music? Oh, that's a good one. So, you know, it's funny because I love, love, love music. Okay. I, I, and I, you know, if you open my playlist, you'd be very confused okay. because you're going to find everything from Sinatra to Bob Marley to Metallica to all the classic rock. I do love classic rock. I would okay. say that's my go-to. Okay. Um, but I'm a huge reggae fan as well. Nice. nice. Yeah. So, um, in fact, last week I went to – or, sorry, it was about three weeks ago now. Okay. Jeez. I went to the Marley Brothers, so okay. Bob Marley's kids had yep. a tribute concert yes. to their father. They yep. played all of his music, and man, that that was a lot of fun. So, yeah. um, you remember your first concert you went to? I do. Okay, what was? Yep, first, first concert I ever went to uh, was the Spin Doctors. Okay. At the New Haven Coliseum. There you yep. go. And I think that was the Downtown. start of my love for you know going to live shows. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> all right. So if if you. Uh, these are my desert islands. If you got stuck on a desert mm. island, what what four albums would you bring with you? Oh man, I would say Bob Marley Exodus. I'd bring Sublime, Ooh, any okay. album. Okay. Um, oof, that's tough. So many good choices. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably bring some Led Zeppelin with me. Huh? And yeah. definitely Pink Floyd. Nice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. My uh, my uh, one of my. Uh, Drum instructors at, the, at the, my music store. He's in a uh, uh, Led Zeppelin uh, Bad Company tribute band called oh, nice. Zeppelin Co. Oh, nice! And so forth. And they do 
all of the hits. Yeah, you know, every, you know between uh, Led Zeppelin and between uh, Bad Company, but uh, and they also do an acoustic set. Sure, which is Led Zeppelin. Oh, it's a lot of fun. Yes, uh, great tunes, great tunes. All That's right. the one thing that connects everybody is music. You know, it is. It's the universal language. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, desert island food. If you got stuck on a desert island, what food could you eat every day? Uh, man, I would probably want spaghetti every day. There you go. Yeah. Spaghetti or pizza. Okay, <laughs> Maybe P- both. pizza comes high on the list. Spaghetti, <laughs> so. you, you know, you got to get the carbs in there. As long know? as it's my own sauce. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> do you make your own sauce? I do. Nice, yep. nice. I so. do. How, how many hours do you stew the sauce? So, it, it, you know, it, it varies. Um, I made a pot last week, and it takes about five hours. Okay. Yeah, I'll let it, I'll let it simmer for about five hours. I actually can it, so I put it in the jars oh, okay. just like my grandmother did. There you go. Yeah, there it's you pretty go. neat. I'll bring you a jar. All right. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. Back in the day, my, my, my parents were the same way. We, we always used to have a, a canning cellar. You used to yeah. go down to all the shelves. And yeah. My father used to do cucumbers. He used to do peppers and, and yeah. tomato sauce and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yep. That, that, and that, and we had a cedar closet in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> put all the winter clothes in the seat right closet, right you know whatever oh yeah good times yes good times jerry thank you so much for coming on i You're appreciate it i'm uh, glad i did oh no this is great and uh uh i i will let you know i'll, I'll shoot you an email when we get it posted on i'm going to be trying to do as i think you're number eight today wow. um so i'm going to be dropping them like a week at a time fantastic you know, so I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you an email i'm glad i was able to participate i appreciate it thank you all right <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this episode of the future of the water and wastewater industry and the careers you didn't know about. I'm your host, Dave Kosminski, and with us in the house from a Connecticut water company, Mr. Jerry McDermott. So, Jerry, thank you again. Uh, hope you enjoyed the conference. I think it was, uh, I saw a few new faces down there. Yeah, it was great. I had a great time today. All right, that is all. <laughs>